Hi everybody, this is Laura and Arnie with Crazy Cool Cakes. We have a great tutorial for you today. If you've never made a teapot cake topper, you are in for a treat. This is so fun and easy to make. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm starting by rolling out some white gum paste a little over an eighth of an inch in thickness. And this is more than enough to cover half of a four inch styrofoam ball. I get it to stick by adding a very thin layer of shortening. These styrofoam balls have a halfway line, so as I'm gently pressing the gum paste down, it's very easy for me to see where I need to make my cut. The video is really sped up here, but when I do this, I like to take my time, being very gentle with my gum paste and being careful that I'm not accidentally denting it. The easiest way for me to cover a styrofoam ball is just like this, doing a half at a time. Once all of the excess has been cut off, I can go in with my straight blade and refine my edge. After rolling out a second piece of gum paste, I'm now adding a thin layer of shortening to this other half. I want to be very careful that I don't accidentally get shortening on the edge of the gum paste that's already there, or else I'm going to have a really hard time getting the two pieces of gum paste to stick together. Once again, as I'm pressing down this gum paste, I'm being very gentle with my palm, making sure not to dent anything. I'm only pressing this down enough to be able to see where the gum paste underneath is, and that way I know where to make my cut. Don't worry about these cuts not being absolutely perfect. We're going to be adding a little decoration right in the middle, and it'll hide any small defects. After trimming off any little excess pieces, I'm gently pressing the two sides together. Then I'm going to add a very thin layer of edible glue in between the two halves. Then I just gently squeeze the edges together to close the seam. And lastly, a little smoothing. The first decoration to go on our teapot is a string of pearls. Here I'm using a Wilton mold that unfortunately has been discontinued, but there are many pearl molds out there that you can find. Each one of these pearls is one centimeter in diameter. The quickest way for me to do this is to get the gum paste as flat as possible on the surface. Then I take my straight blade and put it completely flush on the top of the silicone mold and cut in fast little movements across the mold. Then just pop the pearls right out. You're gonna need a total of two strings. I'm adding a very thin layer of edible glue on the back of one of the strings and then I'm going to place it right on top of the seam, tapping it down to make sure it's nice and stuck. I've pre-measured the second string and I'm cutting off what I don't need. Again a little bit of glue and then just setting it right on the seam and making sure that my two strings meet up nicely. For now I'm going to set this down perfectly straight on top of my edible glue lid. I'm rolling out a worm of soft pastel pink gum paste about a half an inch in width and this is going to serve as a circular base for my teapot. After sizing this up a couple of times, the length I needed is slightly over 6 inches. Once I glue the ends together, I'm going to semi flatten this ring. I'm placing this on top of a little piece of parchment paper to make sure it doesn't stick to my mat and then I just add a little bit of glue on top. The side of the ball that has my lid mark is going to go right on top of this base, making sure it's nice and straight. For the lid of my teapot, I'm going to use a ball of gum paste that's about an inch and a half in width, and I'm going to shape it into a dome shape. Then just add a little bit of glue at the bottom and center it at the top of the teapot. Just like that. Now I'm rolling out another worm of pink gum paste, but this is only going to be about a quarter of an inch in thickness. This will be glued right on the seam between the lid and the teapot. Add enough glue just to make it tacky and then press everything down to make sure it's nice and stuck. For the top of the lid, I'm going to roll out a pastel pink ball that's about three quarter of an inch in width and then I'm going to pierce it with a toothpick. Add glue and then center it on top and push the toothpick almost all the way in. The handle is really fun to make. Roll out a thick worm of white gum paste and make one end taper to a very pointy end. Then you want to start rolling the worm from this pointy end till you get about halfway. Then shape it into this nice handle shape. Always make this a bit longer than what you need. You will have to size it up a couple of times. Plus you'll need to trim the wider end so that it's nice and flush up against the teapot. While this dries a little bit, I'm going to make the spout. I'm going to use a ball of gum paste that's about an inch and a half in width, and I'm going to roll this out so that it tapers and then shape it into this S shape. I'm sizing up the spout and trimming the wider end at an angle so that it sits flush on the teapot. 
Indent the end of the spout and then pinch the edges with your fingers so that they're nice and sharp. Let these dry for a little bit. To make it easier to move around and work with, I'm going to place my teapot on top of this little foam core board with a little piece of parchment paper. I'm going to anchor it to this small toothpick piece to make sure it doesn't move around on me. Now I'm ready to add my handle. This is where I'll be placing it. I have to get a good view of where the handle is going to be anchored, so I'm holding it in place and then I'm going to make a little mark right where I'm going to need to insert toothpicks. I'm using a sharp tool to pre-make the hole so I don't struggle. I'm cutting a toothpick in half and then trimming off a little bit more. It doesn't need to be that long. Push the blunt end in the hole. You need very little sticking out. Then do the same thing for the other hole. Now I'm just adding a tiny bit of glue around each toothpick, as well as a tiny hole right in the middle of the bottom of the handle so I know the toothpick is perfectly centered. I'm pressing it onto the teapot really well and making sure everything is nice and sealed. For the spout, I'm going to use a thick skewer, and as you can see, I'm using a very small piece of it. Using this piece of skewer, I'm pre-making the hole with a pointy end in, and then I'm taking it back out and then turning it around and then placing the blunt end into the hole. Again, I'm making a tiny hole to make sure my skewer is nice and centered in the spout. I'm pressing it on there really, really well and making sure that the spout is nice and straight and everything is sealed. We use cosmetic sponges a lot. They come in super, super handy to hold things in place while they dry. I'm gonna embellish my teapot using beautiful flowers made with this Wilton mold. Again, the easiest way for me is to remove as much gum paste as possible from the top and then placing my blade flat on the silicone mold and using fast, short movements across the mold. Doing it this way makes them pop right out. I'm going to be making several flowers to decorate this teapot. I'll be using the large, medium, and small flowers on this mold. This teapot was for a baby shower, but remember you can use any colors you'd like. I use the same pattern on both sides of the teapot, so if you'd like to replicate this teapot design exactly the way I'm doing it, you'll need two large lavender flowers, four medium-sized pastel yellow, four medium-sized pastel pink, two small pastel yellow flowers, two small pastel pink, and two small lavender. You'll notice that as I'm cutting these out, I'm placing them under plastic. I want these to be nice and moist when I put them on my teapot. Okay, here we go. This part is super fun for me. I just love adding these flowers. I'm adding very little glue to the back of each one. That way it's not slipping and moving around on me. Make sure you give each one a good little press so it's nice and stuck. While I'm doing this, I just want to remind you that if you see any tools or materials that you like in this video, you can find the link to them in the description box underneath our tutorial. After decorating one side of the teapot, I went ahead and copied the exact same pattern on the other side. I'm going to finish off my little lid decoration by making a little mustard colored ball for the very top. I'll be using the same colored gum paste to roll out several little buds for my flowers. I'm using this color because these will be painted gold in a little bit. I'm in love already. Are you liking it? Using the same flower mold, I'm going to be making six small leaves using the end of this border pattern. The other leaves on this mold were way too big. This has a nice little vein on it. I'm also making four little teeny tiny leaves by rolling out little teardrop shapes and then flattening them on my work surface. And then I'm using a sharp tool to create the little veining effect on top. Cute. Finding the perfect place and the room for these leaves gets to be a little bit tricky, but I always manage to do it. I create the same leaf pattern on both sides of my teapot. In case you're wondering, these beautiful mint colored leaves were made using a tiny bit of blue and a tiny bit of green gel food coloring. I love adding lots of pearl shimmer to my teapots. I think this really makes them look very beautiful and feminine. I use a very soft bristle brush for this. Here's another super fun part of making this topper and the final touch, hand painting with gold. I mixed my gold dust with a little bit of vodka and now I'm painting the little ball on top as well as all the buds on the flowers. 
I also like to paint the innermost parts of the flower petals. I think this makes the flowers look so much more beautiful. This is super sped up here, but when I do this, I really take my time and enjoy it. It's very, very relaxing. We can get rid of these now. I don't know how many of these I've made, but I know I'll never get tired of making them. They are so much fun, you guys, and I hope you get a chance to make one for yourself. That came out beautiful, sweetie. Thank you, baby. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial, everybody. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to check out all of our other awesome tutorials. We would love it if you could connect with us on our social media, and we'd also like to invite you to visit our online shops. You can find all the links underneath this video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, what are you waiting for? We love and appreciate all of our subscribers. God bless you, everybody.